Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the AWS Systems Manager run command service using the AWS PowerShell module. So we're going to call run command from AWS PowerShell. As you might recall from a different video, we used the AWS Systems Manager service to invoke a PowerShell script on a bunch of Amazon EC2 instances running the Windows Server platform. To do that, we used the AWS Management Console to kick off a document called AWS-Run PowerShell Script. So what we're going to do this time is take a look at how to use this same service, the Run Command service, and specifically the AWS Run PowerShell Script command document. But in this case, instead of using the AWS Management Console, we're actually going to use PowerShell to automate the invocation of the Systems Manager Run Command service. The first thing I'm going to do is come over to EC2 and spin up a new spot fleet. I'll hit Request Spot Instances, Request and Maintain, choose a target capacity of 5, Windows Server 2016, the C4 large type is perfectly fine. I'm going to leave my EBS volume at 30 gigs and use EBS Optimized Instances. And I'm going to make sure that I assign my default security group and will validate that the ports are open in a moment here. And next, I'm going to make sure that I use the IAM instance profile, EC2 SSM, which has the permissions to allow the EC2 instances to communicate with the AWS Systems Manager service. Finally, I'm going to define an instance tag of key project and value AWS PowerShell. So that's going to allow me to target these EC2 instances using the tags instead of the instance IDs. So that should be everything we need to do here in terms of configuration of our spot fleet. So let's go ahead and launch that. So while those EC2 instances are spinning up, let's go ahead and switch over to the AWS PowerShell module inside of Visual Studio Code. Now I'm using Visual Studio Code on my Windows 10 management workstation here, but if you're using the AWS PowerShell module on a Linux or Mac system, it should operate almost exactly the same way. So the first thing that we're going to do, as with almost any PowerShell script, is to set the default AWS region. So I'm going to choose the US East 2 region, which is the Ohio region that I was using over here in the Management Console. So let's hit F8 and go ahead and run that code. So now that we've set our default region here, let's go ahead and explore the commands available for AWS Systems Manager. To explore the various AWS PowerShell commandlets, we're going to use the get AWS commandlet name command. And we can specify the service parameter. And you can use shorthand like systems. And that's going to be unique enough that we can search for commands related to Amazon Simple Systems Manager, which has since been renamed to just AWS Systems Manager. So these are all the different commands that allow us to interact with SSM documents or maintenance windows or patch baselines and all of the other types of resources that are available. In particular, we're going to take a look at the send SSM command command, and that's going to basically invoke the run command service using the document that we want to specify. In addition, we're also going to check out the get SSM document command, and that's going to help us take a look at all of the different documents that are available. So there's the get SSM document list and get SSM document command. That's going to allow us to inspect the SSM document that we want to execute just prior to executing it. So let's start off with that. So get SSM document list. And if we run this command, you're going to see that we get back a lot of different information. So each of these objects that's returned is going to represent a different SSM document, but it's being shown in what's called list form. So let's go ahead and convert this to a more readable format using the format table command. So now you can see we've got a bunch of different SSM documents and we have this nice tabular view that allows us to scroll through and read it a little bit better. So we've got command documents, automation documents, policy documents, and so on. So we want to focus on looking at the command documents. So what we can do is specify a document filter, and we can do a key of document type. So let's uh, look at the document type property here. And the value of the filter is going to be command, because we only want to look at command documents for SSM run command for the time being. 
So if we hit F8 there, you can see we've now filtered out the list, but it's still not being sorted in alphabetical order. So let's go ahead and tack on a sort object command. So we'll sort on the name property and then pipe that into format table. So let's go ahead and hit F8 here. And now we've got a much more readable table that's been filtered and sorted for just command documents and we've sorted it alphabetically by document name. So as we discussed, we're going to use the AWS uh, in run PowerShell script command. Sorry, I've got the wrong one here. So we're gonna use AWS run PowerShell script that document. So let's go ahead and explore the actual contents of the document. Now to do that, we need to run get SSM document. Now we can specify the document name here. So AWS dash run PowerShell script. And if we hit F8, that's going to actually retrieve the document itself. So right here, we kind of listed out some of the high level details of the documents and using get SSM document, we can actually get the contents of the document. Now these SSM documents are defined using JSON syntax here. And if we come up under the parameters section of the document content, you can see the different parameters that we can specify when we invoke this document. So when we call that send SSM command PowerShell command, we are going to pass in the commands parameter, and that's going to be the list of PowerShell commands that we want to execute on the targeted instances. So let's start actually building out the send SSM document command. So we're going to call send SSM command and start checking out the necessary parameters. Of course, we don't need to specify the region because we've already set our global shell region right up here using set default AWS region. But what we can do is set things like the comment. So let's say create some test files. So we'll actually use this to create some test files here. So we'll provide just a useful comment on this run command execution. We also need to specify the document name that we want to execute. So if you've created a custom document that maybe you want to execute, make sure that you specify that. But in this case, we're going to use the AWS run PowerShell script document. Then we need to specify our targets. So the targets is a little bit interesting. What we're going to do is we're going to target instances by tag. Now, technically you can use the instance ID parameter, which is an array of strings of the instance IDs that you want to target. However, you'll generally find that using the tags to target is a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and specify target. Now target is going to be defined using a key and value. So the key is going to be tag name. And then the value is going to be the value of the tag. So in this case, we actually need to specify the tag key or name. In this case, we used project. So tag is project and the value of that is AWS PowerShell. So next we need to specify the parameters. So the parameters are going to be a hash table. And so the parameters we are going to simply specify is commands. So commands and make sure that you get the casing correct. So if you have a lowercase c here, make sure that you use a lowercase c in your hash table here. And so the commands here we're going to specify are actually an array. So let's specify a PowerShell array here. And so we'll create a directory. So new dir equals, uh, let's say, c slash Amazon. And then we're going to create some test files there. So we'll say one to a hundred for each item, new item, or let's do set content, path, new dir slash ps item dot text. And then the value we'll just set to the ps item, which is the current integer in the pipeline. So basically, we're just going to create a new directory on the root of each e EC2 instance, and then we're going to create a bunch of files inside of that directory with a .txt file extension. So a pretty simple example here, but this should at least kind of show you how to actually call this AWS run PowerShell script document. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to run this and see what happens. So I'll hit the F8 key here. 
And let's see, we have a little error here. So we need to basically fix up the target. So the target is saying it can't create it. So it actually needs to be key and values. So I have key and value. I just need to add an S there to make that plural. So values. So let's go ahead and try to run that again. And as you can see, we've successfully kicked off the SSM run command. So while that's executing, which should only take a couple of seconds, uh, you might look at this syntax and say, oh, wow, this is kind of confusing. You know, you've split this command across multiple lines here. You know, can I make this any easier to understand? You know, I've got this hash table that's split across multiple lines. So the answer is yes. So we can use a technique called PowerShell splatting. And I actually have a separate video on specifically how splatting works. But what we can do is basically define all of our parameters to SSM or the send SSM command here. And we can stick them inside of a hash table. So we're, we're going to have a little slightly more complex hash table structure going on here. But in the end, it's going to be a little bit easier to understand. So each parameter that we pass into the send SSM command command is going to get defined as a hash table key. So I'm just going to fix my indentation here really quickly. Add some equal signs in there. And now we're good to go. So basically what we've done is we've fixed up the syntax here. And I'm now going to use at params to specify the hash table of parameters here. So this cleans up the syntax a little bit. We're basically declaring all of our parameters on SSM send SSM command in advance using this params variable. And we're simply defining a PowerShell hash table, which is a key value pair. So we have comment equals this, document name equals this string, target equals this hash table, and parameter equals this hash table that contains a key and an array of PowerShell commands that we want to run. So hopefully this is a little bit easier to understand. Um, that way you can kind of define the parameters up front and then actually just pass them in with a much simpler, much cleaner looking command. And that way you save any kind of horizontal scrolling inside of your editor. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch over to the AWS Management Console here. We'll check out our instances. They should all be up and running. Sure enough, they are. And if we switch over to EC2 Systems Manager and head down to Run Command, you'll see that we have successfully created some test files. So we hit five targets and five have completed successfully. So now what we're going to do is actually remotely connect to those guys and find out if our command was successful. So I'm going to do one last thing here, which is to set net firewall profile dash name, private domain public, and I'm going to set enabled to false. So what this is going to do is I'm going to run this command again. It's going to create another 100 files, but it's going to actually disable the Windows firewall. And that's going to enable us to use PowerShell remoting to remotely connect to those systems. Great. So let's go ahead and call get EC2 instance and take a look at the instances property, which is going to show us all of our EC2 instances. So what we want to do is just grab any one of these random instances here that's in our spot fleet. And we are going to call get EC2 password data. Pass in the instance ID. Let's grab this one here. And then we are going to pass in our PEM file. And this is going to give us the password for the EC2 instance. And then we're going to go ahead and connect into that instance. So let's do enter PS session. And this only works from Windows, by the way. PowerShell remoting only works from a Windows client system. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're following along from a Mac or Linux system. So then our credential is going to be our IP address followed by administrator. And then we'll ask for our password here. We'll paste in our password. And we should get a remote PowerShell session. Now, if for some reason you have a problem connecting here, it might be because your EC2 security group doesn't give access to port 5985. So go ahead and fire up the EC2 console if that's the case. Look at your security groups. Check out your security group that you associated with your EC2 instances, and just make sure that you've allowed port 5985, and that's what you're going to use to connect to WinRM. 
So we've, can, we've now got this PowerShell remoting session out to that system. So let's go to the root of the drive here, and then we'll check out the file system. So it looks like it didn't actually create our directory because we failed to put a makedir command in there. That was my fault. So let's go ahead and just rerun this send SSM command again. Okay, so we kicked off a, oops, so we actually did that on the remote system, so we didn't really want to do that, but it looks like it might have worked anyway. Okay, let's hop back, hop back on that instance using PowerShell remoting here. Just clear the screen, and now we'll go to the root of the file system. And sure enough, now we have the Amazon directory here. So if we cd into Amazon, you'll see that we've created a whole bunch of text files. So not particularly useful, um, but if you wanted to you know, create a configuration file or change some setting on the system, maybe create some registry entries or something like that, um, you know, you'd be able to do that from uh, SSM run command here. So that's pretty much everything I had to go through on this video was basically just how to call the SSM run command service from the AWS PowerShell module on your management system. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a thumbs up if you liked this video and a comment if you have any feedback on future videos. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.